Okay, let's take a look at question 15 in topic set 8. This question is about comparing bond length in different species. And in order to be able to do that, you need to know how to draw Lewis structures. Now, if you want to know the length of bonds, you have to first think about what kind of bonds you have. So the shortest bond would be the molecule with the most number of bonds. So in this case, a triple bond. And then the longest bond would then be a single bond, the one with the fewest bond in between the two atoms. So the double bond would be in the middle because the more electrons you have in between the two nuclei, the stronger the attraction is to the nuclei, which then pull them closer and result in a shorter distance between the two nuclei. And so that's why the more bonds you have, the shorter the bond would be. Okay, so then the question is to rank these bonds, we have to draw the Lewis structure and then take a look at how many bonds we have between nitrogen and oxygen. So let's take a look at the first species right here. This one has counting valence electron has 14 electrons. You can count that out using the valence electron of each of those elements. N is in the middle here, bonded to two hydrogen. Remember, hydrogen always is terminal. You get an oxygen, which is then bonded to another hydrogen. So right now I have used one, two, three, four. I need seven, right, for 14. So I need one, two, three. That gives everybody octet. And so in this particular case, my NO bond is a single bond. So I'm going to keep track of that because then later on I have to compare the length of all of these guys. Let's take a look at the second species which is N2O and N2O has a valence of 16 electrons. Now N2O is an interesting case because it turns out there are several ways to draw the Lewis structure. N2O remember that you want to put your not oxygen in the middle. This is a common mistake. People will put this structure right here. Now this is wrong and the reason it's wrong is because remember that the center central atom here has to be the least electronegative atom and oxygen is more electronegative than nitrogen so you want to make sure that you put nitrogen in the middle now even after you draw the nitrogen in the middle there's going to be some interesting choices in drawing your Lewis structure so one way you can draw this is you can draw it this way where you put three around there then you have or triple bond likely and then another pair right here so that would give you exactly all the electrons so one two three four five six seven eight eight pairs of electrons which is 16 electrons but that's one way to draw it but turns out that there are other ways to draw this right so for example you can also draw it this way let me show you okay so that's also correct because all atoms have octet or you can think about drawing it this way right that's also correct so that means that you have resonance structures in this case right and in fact they're non-equivalent resonance structures so if you have to pick you're going to have to do a little formal charge calculation with each of this resonance structure so so let's try that. So in the first one, the first nitrogen here, so I'm going to look at this structure one, structure two, structure three, and let me take a look at that nitrogen on the left for structure one. So I have, uh, if I calculate formal charge, remember I have to take my number of valence in the free atom for nitrogen, which is five, and then minus the number of lone pair, which is two here, right? Because I have this, this one that's unused here. So that's a lone pair. So five minus two, and then minus these three bonding pair, remember would bond bonding pair only take half the number of total electrons, so 6 divided by 2 is 3. So that would give me a formal charge of 0 for the nitrogen. If I repeat the same process for nitrogen in the middle, I get a plus 1 because 5 minus 4 now because I have 4 bonds. And then in the last one, I would take 6 because it's an oxygen. And then minus the lone pairs, I have 6 electrons that are part of my lone pairs. And then one more from the bond, so that's going to be negative 1. So that's the formal charge of that one. Let's take a look at the one with two double bonds, structure two. With that one, the, the formal charge of the nitrogen on the left is going to be five and then minus four for the lone pairs and then minus two. So that's negative one. Then the one in the middle is plus one, five minus four, and the oxygen is zero. Six minus six because oxygen is six. You look at structure three, on the nitrogen on the left, now you have five minus seven because there's six electrons that are unbonded and then you have one bond so minus two on the nitrogen in the on the left in the middle plus one again oxygen now is plus one because you have six minus five okay remember two lone pairs right two electrons that are free and then three that are bonded all right so that would be the uh, formal charge distribution then when you look at that you would say well this is the worst the one on the right because it has a formal charge of negative two plus one plus one every 
every atom is charged and you don't want that, right? That's not a good thing. And so we don't use that one. And then if you compare the first two, you'd say that number one is better. And it's better because you have that negative one formal charge on the more electronegative atom. In number two, in structure two, you have the negative one in nitrogen, which is not as electronegative as oxygen. So ideally, you want to put that on the oxygen. And so at the end, you'd have to conclude that this structure is the best one. But that doesn't mean that this is, doesn't really exist. So I would say that the NO bond in this case is somewhere between a single, which is in structure one, and a double. So NO bond is between single and double, but mostly single, but more single than double. And why? Because structure one is a better structure compared to structure two. That's the reason. So that one is a bit complicated to rationalize, but that's how you should think through it. Now let's take a look at species number three, which is NO+. The valence electron here is 10. And this one is fairly easy one to draw. There's only two atoms, so you only have that option. And then to make it 10, you have to put one here and one here to make both octets. So that's an ion, right? So it looks like that. So so this one is easy. This is a triple bond. Okay. The fourth one, NO2 minus, and let's take a look for that one. We have a valence of 18 electron. And if we draw it, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, or one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Now, currently that doesn't give me an octet, right? So I got to move one of those bonds from the oxygen. So it doesn't matter which one I move. For example, I move the one from the right. This makes it the double bond right here. And so that will be one model of it, one Lewis structure. But of course, as you can see, it's possible to also use the one on the left to make the double bond. So I just use dots here to represent the lone pair so it's a little easier to see. Either one of this is possible. Now, if it's possible, remember that that means the structure has resonance and then you're going to take an average of the two structure as the length of your NO bond. So your NO bond in this case is going to be exactly average between a single and a double right in the middle. So I would say, say something about 1.5 electron density, right? Earlier, the one that we talked about here with N2O, that's more like maybe 1.3, 1.2, you know, something shorter, something closer to a single than a double. So it's not exactly in the middle. And then the last species we're asked to consider is NO3 minus. So let's draw NO3 minus right here. This one has 24 electrons. And one structure that you can draw with this is, hey, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Okay, so you have 12, you use up 24 electrons, but the middle nitrogen is not octet, so I gotta move one of the lone pairs on the oxygen to make a double bond. For example, if I do that, that would make sense. But of course, that means resonance, because that double bond can be moved around to any of the oxygen. So I can use it for this one. Just use dots here again to make it a little bit more clear. And then the last position of the double bond could be on the left side right all right so so in this particular case you have a double and two singles and that's how it's being averaged about so basically you have four bonds divided three ways so it's about 1.3 in other words so let's now compare this so the first one is a single that's the longest one right so longest to shortest longest is definitely an h2oh and then followed by which one so which one is closest well the shortest one is the triple bond right here. I'm going to use that one. That's the um, NO plus. And then afterwards, we're really kind of competing between the other three because we have this one right here, which has between single and a double. And then we have NO3, which is 1.3. And then we have something that's right in the middle. So the one that's right in the middle, NO2 minus, should be the next shortest. And then the other two is really um, kind of one could be shorter than the other one or longer. It's really hard to tell given information that we have right now. So we would have to say N2O, probably close to NO3 minus, okay? Because we can't tell whether N2O is longer or not. It probably is because single bond here has a better structure because the electronegativity of oxygen is lower, but it doesn't tell us exactly the electron density that's formed there. So this would be a reasonable answer to give for this question.